Hello, everybody. How's everyone doing tonight? Uh, I pray that you are doing well. I um, just wanted to give a little precursor before we begin uh, that there are storm warnings in my area. So if anything should happen, just check back in. Um, I'm going to continue to finish the study tonight, uh, and then you'll be able to watch it at a later date. Um, but come on, share. Share with your friends. Share with those that are near you, those that are around you. Amen. Just want to make sure that our sound is great. Um, share with those around us. We're going to uh, open up with a word of prayer, and then we're going to jump into our time together. Um, let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you once again for being who you are. Um, Lord God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. But at this time, Jesus, I pray that you would just uh, move as only you can move, God, that you would um, allow us to grow closer to you in, the, in our time together, that you would um, grow us, that you would change us from the inside out. So at the end of the day, God, that you would get all the glory, honor, and praise in everything we do say and thank. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. And the people of God says amen and amen. Well, welcome again. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on LCC Live. Um, I pray that your week is going well. Wednesday is already here. Hopefully everyone had a great Labor Day. Hopefully you didn't eat too much on that day uh, either. Um, I am Pastor Larry. Just so thankful that you are here. And um, as we start off every week, um, please put in the comment section any prayer requests or praise reports. Um, we have one prayer request coming from um, Chuck and Di. Uh, Curtis, their um, daughter, uh, took a spill today. Um, so um, they said that she's okay. She is pregnant. She's with child. Um, but they said that she caught herself before she fell. So she believes the baby's okay. But please be in prayer for them at this time. But if there's anything else, if anyone, um, we need prayer for, are we praying for Pastor, um, uh, Pastor Ron? Um, they said he's home, he's recovering, recouping, um, he's going to see a specialist in Baltimore. Um, so we're praying for him, that God would continue to uh, work in him, that he would give him the rest that he would need as being a faithful, faithful servant of God for so many years. Um, so be in prayer for Pastor Ron, along with Pastor Boone, their families, God, um, all the LCC uh, family. Um, be in prayer with Pastor Jeff, um, uh, along with our, any, all of our staff, Samantha. Uh, Pastor Daphson, um, those connected, those who serve. Um, I just firmly believe that our prayer, the prayers of the righteous avail of much. And um, that I believe that as our prayers go up to God, that he hears them. And as it says, as the blessings go up, the, as the praise go up, the blessings come down. So uh, we're going to constantly be in prayer for one another. Uh, September is here, guys. It just seems like yesterday. It just seems like yesterday um, that uh, we were coming out of the Christmas season. Uh, getting ready for this new year, this crazy year, the pandemic, um, wondering how we're going to make it through. Um, but God has been faithful um, and that some of us have lost people during this time and during this period due to COVID or due to other things. And I just want to have everyone just stay encouraged during this time. Um, for us as believers, uh, we know that we have a different type of um, hope. Um, that our hope is, and I always say it, is not a uh, see you later when someone goes before us when they're a believer in Jesus Christ. Um, it's a, uh, excuse me, it's not a goodbye, but a see you later. Um, it's never a goodbye um, as believers in Jesus Christ. So we're just going to um, just uh, lay our hope on that. But I want you just guys to just stay encouraged at this time um, as we jump into our LCC live for tonight. Well, we finished off Colossians, um, and um, this week we're going to start a, a sort of a different format on our LCC live Wednesday sir, uh, times together. Um, on our Wednesday, on our Wednesday time, uh, what we want to do, what we what we would like to do, is that we want to look at Sunday sermon and dig a little deeper. For anyone out there who knows anything about just if, if you prepared for a sermon or if you've written a paper or a dissertation or whatever the case may be, there's a lot of information that, that doesn't go into your sermon. Sometimes there's things that jump out to you 
as um, a preacher's pastor's preaching or something's going on. So we're going to jump into uh, a little deeper into our Sunday sermon this week, uh, which was amazing. We ended our sermon series entitled The Call, where we looked into the idea and we, and we focused on this idea that, that we all have a calling, a specific calling from God. And that calling from God is um, specific. And, and what that calling does is that navigates us to our purpose, the purpose that we're here on earth. And our purpose here for every believer is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. That's our purpose here on earth earth so the calling is the way that we get to that and this Sunday if you've missed it this Sunday Pastor Daphson did an amazing job as he talked about the swap call the swap call and for anyone who's watching right now or maybe watching in the future if you have not watched if you have not watched the swap call uh, Pastor Daphson this past Sunday uh, I'm going to stop for one second and give you a moment of pause That moment of pause, go check out that sermon. It was a phenomenal uh, word given by Pastor Davson um, in regards to the swap call. Uh, we focused this week on the life of Saul slash Paul. But that idea of the swap call, that, that, that there's a swap, there's a change, there's a redirect that God does in a lot of our lives when he calls us into the ministry together and pastor Daphson just leaned heavy into this idea of this swap call what it meant to paul what it meant to his transformation from saul into paul and tonight there's no way i can re-preach that sermon at all uh once again pastor Daphson did an amazing job but tonight tonight what we're going to do is that we're going to just look at um this idea and dig a little deeper into this idea of the swap call this idea of uh, Paul's conversion, his change, his switch. And, and some of our callings are going to be similar. Um, the week before that, we talked about Esther and our high call. We talked about this, this call back. Pastor Gary talked about sometimes God will call you back from the very thing that he brings you out of. That is so good and so vital at a time like this. So that very thing that God pulled you out of, once he's prepared you, once he's strengthened you, once he has you in a place uh, that, that you now can go back with the security that you won't fall back, um, but that you can go back and now your calling is to encourage others that you, that you can now say that I was exactly where you are. Um, the call back, and we talked about that fear call. Sometimes um, in the midst of fear, looking at Gideon, God will call you out of your fear and, and, and he will not look at you as where you are but he will look at you at what he sees you being. And I thank God that we serve a God that sees me for what I will be and not what I am. Because where I am right now, I'm disappointed at times. I, I, I may feel as though that I, there's more that I can give you, but God says that's, that, that's true. Just rely on me. And this week, our last week together, we talked about the swap call and what, what that looked like in Paul's or in Saul's life um and 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 that that deeper that deeper idea of the swap call that can take us into a lot of different places that idea can take us into a lot of different things but the thing that jumped out to me and and i, I want to hear your comments for those that 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 listen to it or or um or even just you kind of familiar with the story or the transformation of saul what jumped out to me is the idea of the the idea that this swap call the, the very reason why Paul or Saul could be transformed into Paul was because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The swap call is hinged on the fact that Jesus, in fact, died, went to a grave, was buried for three days, and that he was and he rose again from the grave, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ. It, it, it's what this swap is built on. Actually, what our faith is built on. Uh, this 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 swap idea. I mean, I mean, think about it. If if Jesus had not been raised from the dead, then our faith in Him is null and void. First Corinthians fifteen. First Corinthians fifteen, verse fourteen says this. 
And if Christ has not been raised, then we being believers, then all our preaching, the preaching is useless and your faith is useless. This idea that, 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 that the resurrection of Christ uh, would make us null and void. And it goes on in verse 17, it says, and if Christ had not been raised, then our faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. The idea, the idea that, 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 that resurrection of Jesus Christ allows the swap to occur because if, if that does not happen and if that doesn't convict us or, or do something inside of us like it did for the apostles that we're going to look at in a few minutes many of us would still be in the same place where we were and if anyone wants to be honest right now and say that that if it had not been i know it for a for a fact that if it had not been for jesus on my side i have no idea where i would be so the fact that that this this resurrection of jesus christ christ it is the hinging point of our faith, but also it was the reason that that the, that the disciples, the apostles, um, they, they would have been they would have been liars. They, they they would have been liars into the testimony that they gave as witnesses first of the risen Jesus Christ, but also to the life and, and the and and the works that Jesus had done here on earth. So the swap call the swap call allows us to move differently and and it this this resurrection that 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 kind of presses or leans us into this transformation this swap call um it it, it was confirmed it can be confirmed um jewish scholars admitted to it um the disciples Think about it. The disciples, if this trans if this resurrection had not occurred, remember where they were before the resurrection. Uh, they were cowardly. They 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 actually uh, they, they they didn't have the the firmness within them. The the spirit that actually came after. That's why Christ said, "It's better for me to leave, for that spirit could now rest, rule, and abide within each and every one of them." But that 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 resurrection was the reason that gave them the strength uh, to shift from being uh, desperate and disappointed to being firm, confident missionaries to the entire world. And 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 that I mean, when you think about it, if anybody, if everyone wants to look at their own personal transformation, I mean, some people don't have stories, and I, I always laugh at the idea that there's some individuals that remember exactly when they were saved, what date they were saved on, uh, exactly uh, what was going on in their life. I can't do that. I, I I received Jesus Christ at a younger age. Now, as I got older and my relationship with Christ, that relationship became real. Um, then I, it, things become a little bit more clear for me. But this transformation inside, once it locks hold to us, it, it, it starts to, if we allow it, if we allow God's spirit inside of us to change us, to transform us, we can truly rest in the idea of this swapped call. And, 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 and that's the thing that I want us to, to, to kind of really, really uh, lean into. To really look at this idea of, of what does this swap call? What did it mean to Paul? And what does it mean to us as believers? Because I, I want us to be able to go out there and share our faith with those that are that we come in contact with, that we that we connect with, that we meet on a daily basis. Because you never know when that experience may happen, that you may be the catalyst for the swap call of someone else. That you might have the words or you might have the, 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 the uh, demeanor, the disposition uh, that would encourage someone to stir within them this, the, that their life needs to be swamped with that of Jesus Christ. And Paul, once again, he's, he, he's a great advocate for this idea, for the swamped call. Uh, he even states it in, Gal in Galatians uh, chapter 1, verse 13 through 14 
This is Paul speaking, and he's letting them know, this is what I used to be. I'm not ashamed of what I used to be. I'm not ashamed of what I used to do, but this is, this is the reality. I always tell everybody to live in the reality of your moment. Don't be afraid of the reality of the moment. When you're afraid of the reality of the moment, uh, I heard it like this. If you don't name it, you can't claim it. If, if you can't name the things, or you can't tame it, once it's been, once it's been named, now you can tame it. You can now claim it and tame it because until you can live in the reality of the moment that this is my weakness, this is the thing that I'm struggling with, this is this is my shortcoming, then God will be able to, 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 to focus on that transformation. Remember, God did not ask Adam, where are you? Because he wanted to know the location of Adam. He wanted Adam to live in the reality of his moment that he had disappointed not only himself but more importantly that he had disappointed God God wanted better for him and and Adam did not want better for himself but this is Paul speaking um, this is the New King James it says for you have heard of my former conduct someone say type in the comment section swipe or swipe call his former conduct in Judaism he, he tells them he's telling that this church the Galatian church that that that, that you you heard of my former conduct as a as as a as a firm Jew. He says how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it, and I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. Paul let them know that you you knew me before. Sometimes once again, we're, we're afraid. We're talking about this swap call. And, and this Sunday, it really stirred this out of me that the fact that I, I'm, I'm not afraid of, of, of sharing with someone uh, what I've been through and, and what I've struggled with and, and where God has taken me from because it's a testimony. It's a testimony to them to let you know that God is able. He says he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or Think, think about that. Like the, the biggest ask that you have in your mind, God is bigger than that. The, the, the biggest thing that you can think of, God is bigger than that too. So, so when, when, when we think of this, we think about our past, we think about what we've been through, and, 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 or, or we say, God, uh, how can? He's bigger than all those things. And Paul is saying that, that, that in, it, in it all, you knew, you knew me, and yet and still, you know me. You knew me then, and now you know me. You can see the transformation. You can see the change. He, 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 say, he started off by saying that, 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 that they knew his former life because why? He says, I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and listen, and tried to destroy it. He, he tried to destroy the church and 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 in his mind that's what he was supposed to do in acts chapter 8 acts chapter 8 verses 1 through 3 it says paul was one of the witnesses and he agreed completely with the killing of stephen remember paul was there or was at the time saul was there at the stoning of stephen stephen being our first uh, martyr he, stephen being stoned to death and i don't know if you've ever been hit by a rock but it hurts and imagine that's the way that you end your life so saul was there he says a great wave of persecute persecution began that day sweeping over the church he started with the church in jerusalem right there where he was paul is saying that 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 my former manner that i persecuted the church in jerusalem and all the believers except except the apostles were set, scattered throughout the region of Judea and Samaria. Some devout men came and buried Stephen with great mourning, but Saul was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from, look at it, he went from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them in to prison as, as I, as I uh, reference these scriptures, could you please put them, someone put them in the comment sections for me so that the people that come after us were able to look at that. That was Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. 
Paul's uh, persecution of the church began in Jerusalem, but it went beyond. It, it, it went beyond that. Uh, it, in, in the next chapter, chapter 9, uh, Paul goes on to say, Meanwhile, Paul was utterly threats, was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. He said that he went to the high priest and he requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any follower of the way. And Pastor Davison, and, and, and like I said, hopefully you're taking notes on Sunday. I, I'm, this, this coming January, I'm, 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 I'm asking God to do something special for our members here at Life Community Church. And I want to do something special to encourage note takers. But, but this jumped out to me because I never thought about it. I knew... And I knew that that the, the believers in the in the New Testament church they were called that they were in the way, but but Pastor Davison, like I said, and if something jumps out to you, it doesn't make a difference how long you've been in the church, how much you think you know, that that Jesus says, "I am the way, the truth, and the life," and the followers of Him were called the followers of the way, that they were followers of the person who said that I am the way, and He says that 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 He arrested all any followers of the way he found them and he wanted to bring them both men and women back to jerusalem how it says in chains acts chapter 9 verses 1 through 3 paul is going out he not only pers persecuted the church in jerusalem but he persecuted the church everywhere else he wanted to go further to per persecute the church, Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. So, so his former self was one that persecuted the church. Something that he believed he ought to do. He said, as a good Jew, that this is what something that I'm supposed to do. Not only was, was, was his former self one that persecuted the church, not only was this something that he was called to do, but it says in the next verse, it says, and I advanced in Judaism both beyond, no, I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation. He was advancing in Judaism. Remember, most of the disciples, many of them, not all of them, but many of them were uneducated men. Uh, that's why some of the things that went on, um, people marveled at. Because they, 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 they especially um, in Acts, when they began to speak in other languages, um, they were they were not educated men. It was not known for them to know know all these various different languages. But that just lets us know the power of God, the power of Christ, when it just comes and and, and it res resonates from us from the inside out. The the things that that Christ is able to do when we fully submit to His Spirit. But but Paul was different. Saul was different. Paul was very much educated. He was a scholar trained at the feet. At the feet in, in Acts chapter 22, verse 3, uh, G G Gamamel, excuse me, uh, which was the top scholar of that time. Paul or Saul was trained under him. Not only that, he says by advancing in the Jews, his social standing was advanced beyond many of his contemporaries. Paul in a social setting when he walked into the room, if he was the, and, and it, like we do in courtrooms, the judge, people would stand up. People would acknowledge this person coming to the rule. Paul was, or Saul was, that person. And, 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 all, and those things kind of likely uh, included him access uh, into certain financial power. He received certain things. He was actually on the fast track probably to success among his peers, among the people of his time, his former manner. This is before, this is before the swap. Someone put in their swap. But not only was he a persecutor of the church, not only was he advancing in Judaism, but it says the third part in this Galatians chapter one, verse 13 through 14, he says, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. Now this word, that word traditions, anytime I hear it, it just it just sends something inside of me. Reason being, like I said, I, I've been in the church for a long time. 
um, and I've seen it from many different angles. And I thank God uh, that I have been able to see it uh, from an AME standpoint, from a UME standpoint, from a Baptist background, from a, uh, a Pen I've seen Pentecostal, I've, I've experienced Catholic, I, I, I've experienced uh, the non-denominational, um, I've experienced all these different backgrounds, and, but I've seen in a lot, and I can't even point at one, because sometimes uh, we, we fall in, I've seen that thing called traditions destroy churches. I've seen a tradition split churches right down the center. A tradition that had nothing to do with God or his word, but a tradition that caused a riff throughout a church. I've seen a church riff split because of the color of a carpet. I've seen churches just confused about the gloves being worn at communion. Traditions. Paul is saying that, or Saul is saying that he was zealous for the traditions of his father. He was proud to be a Hebrew. He was proud to be a Pharisee and not only a Pharisee, but in Acts chapter 23, verse six, Acts 23, verse six, he said that he's the son of a Pharisee. He's a Pharisee's Pharisee. And, and, and he, he's noted for his opposition to Christ during his ministry. It was his background that, that naturally calls him, his background, his background as a Jew, which naturally calls him, and it's crazy to say this, but it naturally calls him to be prejudiced because that was what they were trained. That was traditions of the time. And these former traditions lent to Paul's credentials, the credentials that Paul um, listed, uh, that, that, that Pastor Davson spoke about on Sunday in, in Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. Philippians chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. Paul lists out his credentials. He says that he was circumcised. He was circumcised on the eighth day. Now, now I don't know um, if you knew what that meant when he said that, but, but in that time, the, the Ishmaelites didn't do that. The Ishmaelites actually circumcised after the 13th year. Whoa. <laughs> At the age of 13, that's when they circumcised their men. I'm not sure if that's something I could lend to. But Paul is saying that I was not like the Ishmaelites. I was like the true ones that were circumcised on the eighth day as a child. Give it to me while I'm a child. Give it to me when I can now forget about it in the future but he's saying his credentials saying that he was circumcised on the eighth day he talks about and continues going that he was of the stock of israel paul was saying that once again all these things are going on he could trace back his lineage back to the children of israel when you were able to do that that gave you certain credentials that lent to your background to your to your your prestige of that time and, and paul was saying or saw at the time was saying that no, so, excuse me, this is Paul now because the, the conversion has done, the swap has occurred. But Paul is listening to these things that I had when I was Saul, of the things that, that, that I could hold on to, the stock of Israel. He doesn't end there. He's, he's, he says that he's of the tribe of Benjamin, out of all the tribes, all the 12 tribes of Benjamin, some from Linda 13th, which was the uh, son of Joseph as another tribe, but officially the 12 tribes of, of Israel. He's saying that out of those 12 tribes, he's one of the two most prestigious tribes of them. The, the, the first was the tribe of, I want to see if anybody knows this. Anyone knows that that first tribe, and we, we talk about it a lot of times, put it in the comment section. He says that he's of the tribe of Benjamin. But what was that other tribe? If, if anyone knows what the other tribe is before I, I name it. Um, the, 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 uh, the other tribe that, that held a lot of prestige as being a part of. But Paul is saying that I was out of one of the two most prestigious tribes. Out of his tribe, the tribe of Benjamin, uh, there were notable people all throughout Scripture. But a few was King Saul. King Saul was of the tribe of Benjamin. Uh, Mordecai, if, 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 you, if you were able to lend into our Esther series, you know who Mordecai was. Mordecai was the older cousin 
of Esther and Paul, some of the more notable people underneath the tribe of Benjamin. And the other tribe was the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Judah. Those were one, two of the two most prestigious tribes of their time. Not only that, he's saying, he said he's a Hebrew of the Hebrew. For those that, that went through our Colossians um, study with us, they un we understood that, that the tainting, the, the mixing of the blood was very, very much uh, uh, opposed by true Jews. That's why Paul took so much uh, flack from his fellow um, people, fellow believers, because some, own, some believe that, that, that this thing called the way, this, 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 this thing that Jesus Christ brought was only to the children of Israel, only to them. Um, but, but Paul saw that, that, that Jesus said that I, I've, I've come that all men, the all men might have this. And Paul was doing that. But Paul was saying that I'm not, at the time when I was saw, I wasn't tainted by any type of Gentile blood. I was a true-blooded Jew. He said, he goes on by says, touching the law, he was a Pharisee. He, was, he belonged to the denomination that was the most, listen, the most orthodox, defender, observer, and expounder of the Old Testament law. He taught, um, he, he taught many of the annuals fault in Judaism, and he was trained by, like I said, the, 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 uh, the, the one of the best scholars or elders of that time. But then he goes on, he talks about that he was persecuting the church. Any good Jew at that time persecuted the church. They went against what they believed, the fact that, that the Messiah was coming for the children of Israel, and the fact that this church was actually doing something that, that was opposed to that, persecuted, persecuted the church, and he ended by saying, touching the righteousness, which is the law, he said that he was blameless. He said, when you lined him up and compared him to the law, no one can find any faults in him, keeping to any points of the law he said I, I had it going on yet this pre prejudiced prominent pharisee something happened within him that changed him in such a way that he now swapped his previous efforts he swapped his previous what he thought his previous call was and now became one of the most influ influential Christians or people of the way of his time and even of our time. The fact that he wrote uh, more than two, one third of the, excuse me, two thirds of the of the New Testament. And a lot of his letters were written by and penned by Paul. Something had to have happened in his life. Something had to occur for that swap call to occur in Paul's life. And I always love, I love just imagining um, a, a portions of scripture and, and trying to figure out what was going on at that time, what had occurred. Uh, what, what was Paul conversion? Many people thought that there were all alternative uh, motives behind his, 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 his conversion, his swap. I mean, it couldn't have been a, a, a pulling with wealth because as a Jew, as a high ranking Jew, he left the, 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 the wealth that he had for the poverty now found as being a Christian. Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, verse 33 through 34 is right here. I actually have it for you. Paul, this is Paul, New Living Translation. Says, I have never covenanted anyone silver or gold or fine car, um, clothes. You know that these hands, Paul says that you know that these hands of mine had worked to supply my own needs. But watch this. This is how I know that, that wealth was not attached to what this conversion was. It wasn't type of, he says, but also even the needs of those who were with me. Paul had it going on. Excuse me, Saul had it going on. Saul said, my hands, I, I, I not only provided for me, but I provided for everyone that was connected with me. So it wasn't wealth. There was no type of alternative motive because people wanted to try to figure out that this swap call of Saul into Paul, that, that there was something under, under the surface that was causing it. And yes, there was something under the surface, but it wasn't wealth. It wasn't fame. Remember, he was a Jew of the Jew. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was a, a, a Pharisee. He had these things going on. So the fame wasn't something because now coming as to a person in the way, 
he didn't have this to fame. If you know anything about conversion at that time, you were you were usually cut off by your family. If your family was Jewish and you said that now you're a follower of the way, and if they remain, they would cut you off. That was the purpose behind, and, and, and this is the good thing about when you study scripture and you know it for yourself. Uh, th there's a scripture, uh, there's a verse, there's a portion of scripture that talks about the, the preaching, and, and, and the, as they were preaching, people came up and started laying things at the feet of the apostles. And, 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 and so many times people misconstrue that as you, you giving to um, an individual as they're preaching. I've seen it happening. But at that time, do you know why they did that? They did that because so that the needs of the body, the needs of the, the, the what would soon be called the church could be taken care of. They were saying that this is what I have. I'm giving it into and the and the apostles, the disciples dispersed that gave them out to those that were in need. It wasn't for themselves, because when you came into a believer of the way, it was kind of assumed that your family would cut you off. But this is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 10 and verse 30. This is what he says. He says, our dedication to Christ makes us look like fools, but you claim to be so wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are so powerful. You are honored, but we are ridicule, ridiculed. Excuse me. Verse 13. We appeal gently when evil things are said about us. Yet we are treated like the world's garbage, <laughs> like everybody's trash right up to this present moment. He's saying that it's still going on. It wasn't about wealth. It wasn't about fame. It wasn't about power that 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 drew Saul into this swap call. He wasn't deceived. He wasn't tricked into it. Remember, his friends, uh, they, 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 they were championing for him not against him so it wasn't about him being deceived it wasn't about him being made to by be, being put down uh this conversion had nothing to do with fear it had everything to do with the resurrection of jesus christ our change that swap call is usually due to an experience a face-to-face -face experience with jesus christ our swap call is usually because we've come face to face with Christ in some way, shape or form, whether it be his through his word, his physical written word, something that jumps out to us and latches on to us and won't let us go. And I pray that's something that 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 if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, that's something that that does for you, that his word is able to swap your life out for his. Sometimes it's it's the preached word. It's us coming and, and receiving a preached word um, from the man of God, sharing with us. Um, seems like he's right in our closet at home when it's really the spirit of God sowing into him so that we now can can be changed from the inside out. That word can come inside of us and, and, and transform us to swap us from the inside out. But it had gotten to a point in the life of Saul that as that swapped call occurred, as Paul took on or Saul took on uh, the very presence of Paul and had changed, many people claimed it to be so many different things. Some people thought that he was mad. Some people thought he was crazy. Um, the governor, uh, Festus, in, in Acts chapter 26, says it now, Acts chapter 26, uh, verse 24. Acts 26, verse 24. Uh, Governor Festus has Paul and says, Suddenly Festus shouted, Paul, you are insane. Too much study has made you crazy. They were thinking that Paul was mad in this swap call. They thought Paul was crazy. As he did, as he gave his life in exchange for the life that Jesus Christ was giving him. It wasn't going to be easy road. So believers, and, and I, I, I want to get this out to everyone that's new to the faith or, or has come to the faith, that your road as a believer is not one that's promised to be easy. Remember, Jesus 
called the disciples into a storm. He knew that they were going into the storm and sent them into a storm. He knows. And I, and I, and I don't want you to be disturbed or, or, or upset when those storms come, nor do I want you to jump out of your calling because of an argument, because of a storm, because of a disagreement, because of, of, of something that you don't. Now, now, if God calls you out, and shifts you and moves you, then that's God. That's between you and God. But your swap call has to be one that you're committed to no matter what comes your way. I am not always going to agree with everyone that's around me, but at least let's come to the table and talk. I, I, I'm not, everyone is not, not going to like me. I, I've, I've come to the conclusion. I, I shared the story before about my experience in the State Police Academy. Everyone's not going to like you, and it may not even be for a good reason. The person didn't like me because I was too happy. The person didn't like me because I, uh, I, I wasn't grumpy or upset when things didn't go my way. But at that time, God had really latched on to me and allowed me to see the good as opposed to the bad. The fact that I have a job as opposed to not liking the job that I have. The fact that I actually am, am bettering my life no matter how hard or difficult it may seem right now. The studies, the papers, and all the other things. A swapped life is not, or a swap, swap calling. A swap calling does not promise that things are always going to go your way. And like I said, people thought that Paul was insane when that swap call came his way. Maybe people thought that, that it actually came onto him that he was actually convicted by all the evil that he had done. All the Christians, the people in the way that he placed into prison, people thought that 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 conviction was bearing so heavy on him that as he was on the road to Damascus, that heat drove down on him and, and that it was more or less a, 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 a state of uh, confusion. That it was a, a state of, 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 of almost like a dream going on, but it wasn't that. Once again, it was the conference connection with Jesus Christ. I want you to know that your swipe, your swapped call, I'm praying that you have it. And if not, understanding that Jesus wants to give it to you. He wants to swap. He wants to give you something better than what you have right now. Like I said, it may not feel good, but it's for your good. I, 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 I'm, I've been blessed for most of my life that I, I, I never had a cavity until later on in life. And a lot of time, and that actually a cavity came from a brace uh, that, that was placed in my mouth um, to keep a, a wisdom tooth from growing sideways. So they were trying to do correct it, but that brace caused a decaying on my tooth. And, and that was the first cavity that I ever experienced in my entire life. Um, but going to the dentist, going to the doctors, it may not feel good at the time, but it's for our good. Some people don't want to go because they don't want to know. That's called ignorance. It doesn't may not feel good. The swap call on your lives may not be something that feels good at that time, but it's something that's for our good. And maybe not even just for our good, but for the good of those around us. Remember, our calling is really not for ourselves. It's for those. It's for others. Our blessings are not for ourselves. And and this I, I shared it before that that uh that that I like God knows God knows I don't know what the future is going to hold. I don't know what's going to bring, but but the blessings that come my way, God knows that. That my, my heart is always to bless other people. I always want to bless uh, those people that, that, that are around me. I, I always want to, to, to be, uh, leave a situation better than I went into it. I, I always want to, to leave something and say that, that, it was, that, that I came into it. It might be good, but I left it even better. That's what God wants to do with our lives. That swap call. It, it may seem good right now, but God is saying, let's, let's swap. There's something better I have in store for you and it may not feel good but it's for our good a swapped call so so the explanation behind this swap call it wasn't an elusive it wasn't a uh, hallucination because of the heat and it and his and and the um the conviction of what he had done before it wasn't something that he was tricked into doing. It wasn't so that he could obtain some type of fame, wealth, or power. It wasn't something that 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 dealt with him getting prestige. Paul Saul's swapped call was directly connected to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our swapped call is directly connected to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Once again, like I said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, him convicting me, him meeting me face to face, because once again, I made excuse after excuse after excuse for all the wrong I'd done. All the wrong, all the wrong that I did in my life, I made an excuse for it. But God met me face to face. And when God meets you face to face, I pray that you listen, that you lend an ear. It says, he that have an ear to hear, let him hear. And I'm praying that you do that. I'm praying that that happens in your life. That this swap call, that this, this conversion of Saul could help to bear witness of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. How his resurrection power enabled him to be raised from the dead. But also that resurrection power, that spirit now lives and resides with us. That we would do even greater works. Would do even greater works. That's what his word promises. That we would do even greater. And I can't even imagine that, but his word promises that. That we would do even greater works works if we live in a spirit of obedience that when the swap call comes that when that call comes that we answer the call and that we respond to it amen and amen well that that's our swap call that's a little digging deeper then that's going to be our kind of our format unless god says something different unless god really tells me that he wants me to to to, to lean into something else this is what our wednesdays are going to be about digging a little deeper into what we spoke about on Sunday, but coming up, I want you guys to be ready, be prepared. I'm excited about it. Uh, our, our, our sermon series, what on earth am I here for? As we lean into our, our, our life groups, our life groups coming together once again, as we did at the beginning of the year, that we're all going to be studying the same material at the same time. And the thing about this is that we did it before, but this, the Sunday before your group meets, we're going to lean into that particular chapter, that particular week in the study before you guys jump into it. There may be some conversation that comes up from the preached word that Sunday. There may be a little bit more that, that goes on uh, on Wednesday as we dig a little deeper into that word. But I'm praying that you are getting yourself ready. If you are not signed up for a life group, you do not have to be a member of Life Community Church. My aunt asked me the other day if she had to be a member. And I said, no, you are not. Um, myself and another member, we, we are in Pennsylvania. And we are opening a life group um, between our two homes um, in the Avondale West Grove and Landenburg area that we have sp slots for maybe two more people and we're going to exchange it. We're going to spend one week at that at her and her husband's home. Then we're going to spend one week at um, myself and Jessica's home. Um, but, but, I, but we have life groups going on in person. We have life groups going on in line online. We have life groups that are going to be starting on Sunday, immediately following service, um, beginning at 12 noon at life community church at LCC. Um, so we have a lot of different avenues. Uh, if you come out to church, you get good, good word you'll you'll be able to get some good food in our life cafe and then you'll be fed together as a group as you grow together because we firmly believe that we as believers need to build community just like the apostles and disciples and the believers in the new testament church did how they said they went from house to house that's when relationships are built i wish that i could personally know each and every person that i come in contact with on a deep intimate level that I could know everything about you, but I can't. That's the reality of my moment. I want to, and I, and I try to, but I can't. But these life groups that you become a part of, they become an extended family. They get to know if you're real, if you're honest, if you're hot. Remember, we are a hot church. Samantha said they sent that to me today on Facebook. They said that her hotness is going to prevail. But we are going to be a hot church. We're going to be honest, open, and transparent. But I want us to have hot groups, hot life groups, that you're going to be honest in your groups, that you're going to be open in your groups, that you're going to be transparent, whether you believe the people are there are going to agree with you or not. That's how you grow with as a family. Every person in my family, they don't agree with me. I don't agree with every person in my family. But guess what? I love them. I love them. I accept them for being who they are. You don't have to always. And that's the that, that's the problem with our with even our society. We feel as though that the acceptance means approval, and that's not it at all. But these are moments as life group 
groups, that you can come together, that you can begin to build community. And what we're praying is that as you begin these life groups, that each host would take someone alongside them, that they'd be almost like an apprentice. And that person would grow in these life groups, that this person would next time we have it, that person may continue to go and, and, and be underneath your group. But that soon, hopefully sooner than later, that person would avenue or venture off and start their own group. That's how we divine. That's how we, as a cell, as a church, that's, that, that, that's how we grow. But we're starting this life group. What on earth am I here for? Talking about the purpose that we have in our lives. And, and, and what I'm going to do also is that there's a study guide. But this is the book. This is the actual book written by Rick Warren. Now, I, I told, I, I've talked to different people. Some people um, may not agree with everything, but a, a, a pastor friend of mine shared with me when I, uh, when I was going and listening to a lot of people. He said, Larry, take in the meat, spit out the bone. There may be something that you totally, totally may say, I, I, I don't get with that, but take in the meat and spit out the bone. But once again, be honest about it as we travel through it together. It's a six-week study. This Sunday, this Sunday our, our founding pastor, Pastor Jeff, will be in the house uh, presenting with us the vision behind this study along with a few other things he's going to be sharing with us. So if you are in the Newark, Delaware area, I'm asking you to have your face in the place. Pastor Jeff will be bringing a word for a time such as this. You don't want to miss it. And then, like I said, if you're not a part of a life group, you can sign up online at lifecommunitychurch.net or you can come on Sunday. We have our list there as well. And you can sign up for a group there as well. Um, this is the actual textbook, but we are actually have a study guide that your life group hosts will be, will be leading you through. You can have your own as well. Um, they, they, they are sold on Amazon and I think they have a next day delivery. Uh, we will have a few on Sunday, uh, for people that want to uh, purchase them from us. We are not making anything off of these books, whatever we get them from, from Amazon. Uh, we will round them up. So if, if we get them for 1295, we'll sell them for 13. But if you want to be a part of a group, um, we will have the books available. But if you say, Pastor Larry, I can't even afford $13, do not let the purchase of a book keep you from being a part of the group. You come and see either myself or Rebecca or Samantha. Uh, we'll make sure that it happens. But we'd rather see your growth in Christ um, come as opposed to you staying away because you feel as though that you don't have. Um, but I'm encouraged about it. But also what I'm going to do, this book right here, The uh, the Purpose Driven Life, What on Earth Am I Here For? This actually goes through uh, a, a 41 day study. Uh, excuse me, 42 day study. Um, every day it gives you a different reading. It gives you a different phrase. Um, and it gives you just a good, good um, kind of growth. It allows you to grow um, as we go through the study together. What I have, uh, yeah, 42 days, what I have purposed, and I need you guys to support me. I, I don't want to be on this thing by myself, but for every day, every day in this book, at the end of the chapter, it gives a point to ponder, a verse to remember, a question to consider, and it gives you an option if you want to listen to a message attached to it. But for every day, for 42 days straight, I will be coming on Facebook Live, I'll try to actually also post to our Instagram page, if, I, if not my own Instagram page, and we'll, tr we'll be transferring that over possibly to our, our, our YouTube page. We're not sure uh, because these are not going to be long things, um, but it's going to be short things uh, that, that it'll just it, it'll encourage those that may not go through the book that you will be able to get those that point to ponder, that verse to remember, and a question to consider along with a little a little uh, uh, a little bit from either myself and I may even have some guests come in to do one or a few during that 42 day time together. But I am excited. I am excited about what is ahead for Life Community Church. Great things are ahead. If you don't have a church home, we want you to consider Life Community Church. If you just want to just if you're just exploring, just looking out, come spend some time with us. Sundays, 10 a.m. We start promptly at 10 a.m. Um, for a great time of worship, word, and fellowship. Uh, we encourage you to come on out. 
um, come on out. Uh, we have uh, cards for our members to start um, sharing with individuals. Um, uh, the, the cards actually are, 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 are amazing. Our own um, Rebecca uh, made them for us. It actually just simply says, come sit with me. Come sit with me. You could share that with someone near you. And on the rear, it has our services along with our times, internet, and our QR code. For those people that do not know what a QR code, you can have someone look at that if it's a last card or if they don't want to, they're not a card people, they can scan that QR code and receive the information on their phone as well. Um, but on Sunday, I'm going to encourage everyone to, they're out in the lobby, pick up your come sit with me card, hand them out. If you had a restaurant, hand them to somebody. If you want to write your name on them so, so that people don't forget who you are, um, do that. Um, but we are encouraging people to come on out. God is doing a great thing. Great things are on their horizon. Great things are coming. Um, and, and you are a part of it. I can't do it by myself. Rebecca cannot do it by herself. Samantha cannot do it by herself. Pastor Davson cannot do it by himself. Jared can't do it by himself. Dave can't. We need each other. So... Get your card. Invite someone to church. If they, if they, and if not, invite them out to your life group. If you're not part of life group, join a life group. We want our lives to be so connected that we are encouraging each other, so that we don't go through things and someone doesn't know what you're going through. Remember, this Sunday, Pastor Jeff is going to be with us. Come out, share with us. But it's our time of prayer. Um, I didn't see any prayer request that popped up but we can continue to pray for Diane Chuck Curtis um, continue to pray for Pastor Ron and Pastor Boone our pastoral staff and just pray for the revitalization of Life Community Church revitalization of LCC as God just continue, continues to do a work in and through us and that we're obedient to the voice of God, the calling of God and the leading of God. Um, we want to follow his lead so let's end our time together with prayer. Lord God, we just thank you once again for being here with us. We know that you are faithful, God. We know that you are true, God, and that we know that you can do amazing things. So God, we place our lives into your hands. Those areas that we, that, that we may not even know of, God, we pray that you would uh, that you would come and that you would uh, do a work, God, that that you would, God, that you would change us, God, from the inside out, that we are living examples of you to a world. Lord God, I pray that you would just be with every member of Life Community Church, that you would be, that you would just touch every member of your church, God, the, the capital C church, the ecclesia, God, that you would do something new in their lives. That that new thing would not be for themselves, but it would be for those around them. That they would see the power of Jesus Christ. And that it would draw and pull on their heartstrings in such a way that they would say, what must I do to be saved? So now, God, I pray that you would move, God. That you would do a work. That you would bring families back together, God. That you would restore marriages, God. That you would challenge individuals to live out their calling. Lord God, I just thank you once again for my wife, for my family, for my daughters, God. God, continue to use us, God. And we'll give your name all glory, all honor, and all praise. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. And the people of God said, amen. And amen, amen. And for those couples, we, we were doing a marriage challenge last week. Um, Jessica, my wife, was sick. But we're gonna catch up to you guys. Uh, we are, we're gonna have lunch. Uh, double. We actually gonna we're gonna double up um, for our five dates. There were two other couples that said they were gonna do it. I got photos. I got pictures from the first. Um, they were obedient to it. Um, I'm gonna call their names, but at the end I will put their names out there. Um, but uh, just know that the Redmonds are coming for you guys. Um, but my wife was sick. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the food that was sent to our home. It was a blessing. Um, so we would not have to cook on Sunday, uh, but she's feeling better. So we are going to get out on our date and we are going to just see what God is going to do for that other couple. I'm praying that you guys will do it as well. But I thank you all. I thank you guys so much for what you've been to my life. I thank you guys for trusting me um, with 
with with with you and that I thank God. I thank God for what he's going to do. Have a great night. I pray that you are blessed, but always remember that we are always blessed to be a blessing to someone else. You guys have a great night. Take care. I love you, but like I said, every Sunday, I love you, but Jesus loves you more. All right. Take care.